Hello everyone, this is Jimmy and welcome to a new series on this channel. Today we're getting started on All the Mods 3 Expert Mode, Shedding Tears. I have no clue what that means, but I suspect we'll find out. So, uh, I've tested the pack a little bit, it uh, doesn't say how much, but probably less than an hour of it, and I'm about to jump into my local server so that we can play. And as we load in here, I would like to point out that I now have a profile picture. It was done by at Lullaby. Link to the artist Twitter is in the description. Check it out for more awesome artwork. All right, so this is my first time logging in uh, to this world specifically. So uh, I have no clue where we are, but it looks like we spawned in a freezing ice plains. All right, well, uh, I don't like to build here because getting snow on all your builds is annoying. So let me start by um, finding somewhere, hopefully, with a little bit less snow and a little bit more daylight. While I run around uh, here, I want to talk a little bit about my plan for this series. So in the next coming weeks, I will be doing a little bit of travel, unfortunately, which means I will be away from my desktop. Um, I'll have a laptop with me, but I don't think it's really capable of recording. So my plan is to uh, try to record a bit of a backlog before I go, so you guys will have your content. Uh, unfortunately, though, that means that I won't be able to, you know, read any... Well, I'll be able to read comments, but I won't be able to apply anything I learn in the comments to the gameplay. Uh, I feel like I'm in a bad way. That blizz slows me and is going to kill me. That looks like I'm fine. Haha. -ha. Alright, anyways, um, so yeah, because of that, uh, I'm just, you know, forewarning you that even if you give me great ideas in the comments, which you most of the time do, um, I won't be able to apply them to my gameplay because odds are I've, I'm multiple episodes ahead recorded already. Um, it might also mean that there'll be some downtime after like the first handful of episodes, depending on how much I get recorded before I have to go. But, um, yeah. So uh, as far as the eye can see, it's still ice planes. So I'm going to cut to uh, something a bit less boring that be running through here. Ah, help me. I'm being shot by skeletons. If I die, I'm just going to run the other way, I think. Because uh, clearly going this way has led me nowhere. So I've been sustaining myself on this journey on the wild rice that spawns here. Uh, which is good because it gives me food so that I can like run and regen. Both very important things. Uh, but it's bad because it means I have to follow the river and I'm kind of like serpentining all over the place. But sooner or later I'm bound to leave this biome, right? Like it's... Oh, close. It's huge! Everything I've seen is this ice plains biome. Wait, there in the distance I see green. It looks like a jungle or something. Which is uh, not the ideal place for me to build, but it's better than this ice. Hallelujah. Alright, I think after our long journey, we found it at last. The promised land. Flat, relatively featureless terrain. Now, it's not quite as flat as your girlfriend, but you know, sometimes you gotta make do with what you got. We've, uh, we started here. We journey to here. So, hopefully I don't die before I can make a bed. Let's set a waypoint. And uh, this will at least be our starter base. Who knows if we'll move. Spoiler, we probably won't move. So, um, oops, I'm supposed to open the quest book. Let me uh, redo some keybinds. All right, so the game starts you off with a couple items. The Akashic Tome and a quest book. Akashic Tome comes pre-configured with all the uh, documentation books in it. Awesome. I, I love packs that do that. The quest book, uh, as you can see, is the FTB Utilities quest book, or the FTB Quests quest book. It's useless because you'll want to keybind it. Um, and why waste a slot? So I have mine keybound to tab. All right, let's get started then. I think these first few quests are just some reading. So uh, let, let's read together. To prevent skipping progression, we have used game stages to yada, yada, yada. Cool. Words are generated differently than you're used to. No more strip mines or it's in the overworld will now generate on exposed stone, both underground and in caves. All right, I can get behind that. Exploration. While you, f while you explore the world, you may find all sorts of changes. The world is vast and diverse, so it is suggested that you explore, but be careful. Just as you find them, wait, but be careful. As you may find, the monsters are just as tough as you remember. All right, cool. 
The quest book is divided into tiers of increasing progression. Save for tier zero. They all have multiple paths for... Okay. And the quest book will have a fairly standard progression line for you to follow. However, there will be multiple different... So it's, this is about optional versus not optional versus like... Um, I think these are like the circle quests are like your main quests. The uh, gear quests are your... Right, gear are end quests, and square quests are wait, diamond are optional, square are informational. Ah, so these are these that I'm doing are square quests, so they're informational, and that's an optional quest. All right, cool. First off, you'll find that it really hurts to punch a tree, so we need some flint. Um, also, not many trees around here, but uh, yeah, it hurts to punch trees, reasonable. All right, so let's go get some flint. Um, I think one of the reasons I like this spot was that there was a sandy beach with some flint right over here. And I guess there's more trees here that we can gather. La -la -la. These trees are weird. These aren't your standard, you know, oak tree. Huh. I wonder, I mean, this must be some mod adding this type of terrain generation. Um, looks like we have crabs on the beach. Crabs are uh, vicious. Don't hit a crab. If you hit a crab, they will kill you. Anyways, um, that pig has spots on it. <laughs> Anyways, uh, there's my gravel. I remember I saw it running by. You know if punching trees hurts, shouldn't punching rocks also hurt? Because that's kind of what gravel is. I mean, punching rocks probably hurts more than punching trees, doesn't it? In any event, one thing I like about FTB quests, you can hit your, um, like, A, your your uh, bookmark over here, like over this, and then it'll bookmark it here. Um, in fact, I had those book from, bookmarked from before. So, um, we can now make, let's see, the hatchet. Oh, no, we can't. I'm short a piece of flint. All right, there we go. So just like that, quest complete. Next up, we have to chop some wood. All right. So I have both good news and bad news. Uh, good news is Ore Excavator is in the pack. Bad news is it's gated. Um, I'm typically not a huge fan of gating Ore Excavator or, you know, Vein Miner, because most of the time, by the time you get it, you don't need it anymore. Like, if I had it here, it would have saved me, you know, 20, 30 seconds of tree trapping here. Maybe not even that much, like 15 seconds. But, uh, like, if it's gated too late by the time you get it, you actually, you know, never need to use it. So it kind of makes it useless. But uh, at the same time, you know, I don't necessarily mind taking a little bit of time to chop trees. It encourages you to actually, like, build a tree farm, too, which is fair. Anyways, um... What was I saying? There are some packs, I think, that gate it appropriately, like, uh... I think Sevtech is is a reasonably fine example of that. Um, you know, in Sevtech, because you're mining like even into the reasonably late eras, the fact that you don't unlock uh, or excavator until I think it's like era three or something, age three, um, it's still useful. Combined with the fact that the ores all spawn in massive veins, so it's exceptionally useful in that pack. But uh, you know, I won't pass judgment before having seen. Before having tried things. In any event, I'm going to chop trees. Um, normally, I don't like to chop these big trees because that means, you know, you either have to finish chopping the tree or leave floaty bits. And uh, I'm probably going to be a terrible person and leave floaty bits. And you can all tell me how terrible a person I am in the comments. But you can't stop me from leaving the floaty top of the tree. And nighttime is basically upon us again. So I guess I'll go dig a hole and hole up for the night. Um, I'll dig it close to where I have our waypoint, I guess. Alright, I should be safe enough in here. Uh, for now, we'll just continue on quests. I need to make some planks. I'll use this exotic wood first. Alright, so the next thing it wants us to do is to make the Tinker's uh, tables. It looks like Tinker's Construct is very early in the pack, and in fact is the defining feature of Age... or Tier Zero. We can also make a satchel. Um, what does this take? Basically some black dye, wool, and leather. So I just have to find some way to make leather. Llamas drop leather? 
horses drop leather. All right, whatever. Um, I'll figure that out. Anyways, I'm going to craft these uh, various tables. All right, I've crafted all our tables. Um, I'm going to probably try to build above... Well, hmm. I wonder, is there anything... Let's see, is there like torch master in the... There is. And this is a very easy recipe. All right, so yeah, I'll build above ground as much as I can. So I, uh, let's consider this whole temporary. I won't even bother setting this up yet if I can avoid it. Um, look, guess next I need a bunch of flint to make parts. Do I have... Uh, you know what, I'm just going to place and break this so I can get up to 24 pieces of gravel because I think I'm going to need more than 8. And I need something to do, you know, during the night while I'm holed up. So, uh, this is fun and engaging gameplay, right? I figured out how to do it easily. Put the gravel in your offhand and then have it like an empty open main hand and just hold down both mouse buttons. And pretty soon I'll have converted all the gravel into flint. That was easily the hardest I've ever worked for 25 or 24 pieces of flint. But uh, it's almost daytime by the looks of things, so pretty soon we can bust out and uh, might have to kill a zombie or two or something. But we're almost free. Alright, looks like everything around here is burned up, so freedom! Can't wait till we can work throughout the night too, but... Until we get a basically until we get a magnum torch or some way to light up the immediate surroundings, that really won't be possible. All right, so let's, let's see. Get rid of all this tall grass. It'd be nice if we get an ender lily while we're at it, huh? But somehow doubt that they might be disabled. Maybe not. Even if they aren't, their drop chance is super low. All right, good enough for now. Let's uh, set up our tables. I like to set these up in the table or in the order you usually use them in. So, pattern chest, uh, or rather, stencil table, pattern chest, um, tool station, wait, no, part builder, and then tool station. Part builder, tool station, eventually that'll become the tool forge. And I like just to have a crafting station here so you can tab between all of them. All right, so let's see, which parts do we have to make? Pickaxe head, shovel head, axe head and sword blade, right? And then inevitably we're going to need binding and tool rod as well. Let's see, and make them all out of flint. So if you have the pattern chest next to your part builder, you can just uh, very easily select what parts you're making. And I guess it doesn't tell us, but I, the next step is to turn these into tools. So um, I think we can make a, let's see, we want a sword. Yeah, so we want a sword, a matic, or not a hatchet, a matic and a pickaxe. So I need a couple sticks, a binding, and a guard. Let's see, let's get the stencil for... A guard. Actually, I want a. I want the sword that lets you jump. Which one is that? That's the long or the rapier, right? Or is it the long sword? The no, long sword is the one that lets you lunge. So I want that guard. Ah, uh, this guard. And I guess I'll make the guard and all this out of wood. Can I make paper? I probably shouldn't have turned all of my uh all all of my reeds into paper, but oh well. Um paper is good for the binding because it gives you an extra modifier. And uh that we can just use sticks. Alright, so head binding. I guess you can't just use sticks. Uh, head binding tool rod makes a pickaxe. Then long sword is played. That and another stick. And last but not least, a matic. Cool. Basic tools. Alright, so the next thing is 
upgrading our flint tooth tool. Start by collecting bone meal and clay to make unrefined porcelain. Uh, bone meal and clay. Alright. Before I get too carried away though, let's kill some sheep to get wool so that I can make a bed. And I'm only going to kill the white ones because I need white wool specifically. And I obviously don't have shears yet, so sorry sheep. Ah, bed. Now we can sleep through the night and, uh, you know, if we die we'll respawn here instead of 2,000 blocks away at the spawn point. I wonder, do crabs drop bones? Oh, these crabs don't kill you. These aren't the divine RPG crabs. Haha! -ha! But no, they do not. Does that turn into... Nope. Alright, I guess I gotta wait for nighttime and kill some skeletons. In the meanwhile, I need a bunch of uh, sand as well, so... Uh, does a matic not count as a shovel for sand? It doesn't, does it? That's annoying. I should have made a shovel. Well. Alright, it's nighttime. I have no armor, no shield, no food, and need to kill skeletons. What could possibly go wrong? Or I'll start with zombies. At least I have a weapon. Haha, <laughs> a monster hunter. Pigs don't drop bones, do they? Didn't think so. But they drop food, which is also useful. Hello, server. Earth the server. Anytime now, server. Alright, skeleton, I see you. I'm I'm gonna kill you if it's the last thing I do. Aha! Two bones. Nice. Alright, uh, if I can get two more maybe, I think I can sleep away the night happily. I may have bitten off more than I can chew. There's a baby skeleton. Oh, there's two baby skeletons. I'm dead. Goodbye, world. It was nice knowing you. Oh, two creepers. A zombie. Another creeper. A spider. Goodbye. Hey, I'm not dead yet. I'm impressed with myself. Whee! Alright, but I'm not going to kill any skeletons at this rate, so I may as well try to work my way back to my bed and sleep. Hopefully without dying. I should have put my bed underground. That would have been the smart thing to do. Looks like I made it. Haha! -ha. I'm the best at this game. I'm dead. I'm dead. Goodbye. Can you burn already, please? Burn faster. Alright, but looks like I did make it through the night. Having survived the night, I wanted to see about making a, you know, just a vanilla furnace so that we could, uh, so that we could you know, survive, uh, or so I could cook my food, like the raw mutton or whatever. But uh, it turns out that's made from seared bricks. So, nope, can't do that yet. All right, so I still have to do this. I need, um, I got our bone meal. I need to find some clay, and I need a bunch of sand for this. So easiest way to find clay in the early game I found is to, uh, you know what, let's bring that raw food with me. If in a pinch, I'll eat it. But easiest way to find clay is to dig up riverbeds. So I'll head back over to our river here and see what we can find. Oh, a creeper blew up here. Nice. Bones. We have colored chickens too. Interesting. Um, but yeah, here riverbeds spawn these like little clay, you know, bits. And hopefully this uh, little bit will be enough to get us going, at least for now. And as has previously been mentioned, ooh, can't mine it yet. Or spawn and like expose faces of stone like this. But uh, I guess it takes a bronze level pickaxe to get to it. So we'll just leave it alone. What's that? That mountain looks very weird, doesn't it? I guess it just has sand on one side. And a bunch of snow. Alright, whatever, I'm gonna leave it alone. Tiny little trick to make your sand gathering easier. Right now, if I were to just punch the sand, you know, I get one piece at a time. You can break the block underneath all the sand, and as it's falling, place a torch there, and you get the entire column at once. So, uh, a little bit that'll help you out, um, making it slightly easier. I need the sandstone too, so I'm gathering that as well. But, uh, yeah, 
this will make sand gathering go just a tiny little bit faster. And I'm a very impatient person, so a tiny little bit faster makes me happy. While I was getting the uh, sand and clay and stuff, I also grabbed a handful of these wild berry bushes. So I may as well plant them. They'll be, uh, you know, source of somewhat renewable food. And uh, yeah, because right now I'm pretty hurting on food. So renewable food is, I think, a good thing to work towards, even if it's just berries for the time being. All right, so complains about food and then he goes sprint jumping to go 10 blocks <laughs> anyways i have to make a couple of kilns um small limestone bricks yes clay and compressed sand come on get out of here i, I wish we had uh crafting tweaks for the empty buttons but oh well And what's the last thing? Drying racks. Uh, I'm gonna need a bit more wood. Alrighty. I'm not even sure what this is for. To create porcelain bricks, you will either dry them on a drying rack. Be careful not to dry all of your porcelain to bricks. Due to some issues with recipe in the kilns, is that need to be? No, the atom kiln is a 2x2x2 two by two by two multi block in which the top two front blocks are kiln blocks and the rest are small limestone bricks. Oh, okay. So I guess this is just like a furnace of sorts, I guess. Um, where I'll put, it, I'll put it here for now. So if I'm understanding, it's built like this. Oh, cool. So yeah, this does look like it's a furnace of some sort. Um, I'm not quite sure what it does. Does it uses in JEI? There we go. Uh, is this just all the furnace recipes? Yeah, I think so. Okay. All right, next up, we have to make a bunch of porcelain components. And I think the reason, oh, did I not pin them? Eh, huh, weird. Uh, that's not how you spell it either. All right, there we go. Properly pinned now. Um, I think, yeah, I, almost everything I have to turn into porcelain brick, uh, with the exception, I think, of the faucet, which is, yeah. So uh, do I actually have enough? I need one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, times two, 16. I'm going to need more porcelain to make all these components. Game, you've lied to me. You told me I only needed 16. All right, so I'm going to need more bones. Uh, the easiest way to get that is probably going to be from trying to find those bone structures that generate in the world. That is also what the quest recommends. So I'm going to go take a little bit of uh, a look-see around here, see if I find anything. Also, I'm going to see if do horses drop bones. <laughs> Sorry, horse. No, but they do drop leather, which is valuable too. All right, I'm going to kill these. Sorry, horses. I know, I know, I'm an awful person. Well, it's not a bone structure, but I think these, uh, these astro sorcery structures can sometimes have loot under them somewhere, maybe? These tiny ones might not on second thought. Is it under one of the- oh, there we go. Alright, well, uh, hey, bones has loot. That's exactly what I want. There might be a second one under another one of these. Nope, that's all we get. Oh well, um, I'll leave the marble here, I'm sure. By the time I need it for Asso Sorcery, I'll have plenty of sources of marble. There we go. A bone block structure, I don't know. A fossil, I guess, is what it would be called. This should provide all the bone meal I need for now. Much easier than killing skeletons. Actually, because these don't shoot back. Alright, so I'll spend a couple minutes harvesting a fair bit of this. Unfortunately, it's night time, so I'm going to sleep here and hopefully uh, I'll be able to reset my spawn point back on our base before I die. I should actually see, is there a sleeping bag available? There is. Could I have just made this? 
Uh, no, it needs blue wool specifically. All right, well, uh, I'll keep that in mind when I get blue dye, or I guess if I find blue sheep to kill, because uh, sleeping bags are very convenient. You know, they let you sleep without setting your spawn point. I never realized how big these fossils were. Like, they're still... I, I broke my pickaxe, so uh, I'm not going to get any more than the stack and a half I have, but uh, yeah, there's still a lot more here. So I'll, I guess I'll just leave it bookmarked. In case I need to come back later for whatever reason. And for now, I'll just bust my way out of here. And head back to base, which is... Uh, I can't quite read that number. 300-ish meters, I think? Now that we have all of this bone meal, we should be able to make plenty of porcelain. So I just have to uh, try it all. At least enough to make our porcelain smeltery, mini smeltery thing. And I wonder, can I cook food in here? No. So I guess I can't do all the recipes that can be cooked in a furnace. Because right? yeah, this can be cooked in a furnace. I can try it, but that takes five minutes. I guess I can just make a bunch more drying racks. That seems reasonable. All right, here's a small, uh, I guess we call it like a cellar. Just a little bit underground. It'll eventually lead into a mine of some sort, I guess. But uh, we can try our, our mutton there so we can get some much better food. While I'm back at base, I should reset my spawn point too. In fact, it's almost nighttime, so I'll just sleep. Now that our porcelain has been dried into bricks, let's create all the things we need. So, one of those, one of these. I've already made our faucets, a heater, and a melter, uh, which needs a barrel. How do I make a porcelain barrel? There we go, one porcelain barrel. and a melter all right so this entire thing can be set up into uh think about it as like a one by one uh smeltery like a very tiny smeltery that is powered by furnace fuels i think the way it goes is let's see heater melter on top um and since there's two ways to cast things i typically put two uh two faucets like so and I think that completes the quest. All right, so what is the first thing we want to make? Vitrified sand. Is this... How do I do? make this? The melting compressed sand? Yep. All right. Sand. Uh, actually, before I do that, I have to make the cast, don't I? So I need a sh sharpening kit, which is two clay and a pickaxe head which is also clay all right so let's start by making the cast let's melt four pieces of clay uh and i need fuel so for now that'll be coal i swear i had a little bit of coal i put it in here didn't i there we go um and that'll melt our clay into molten clay so until we can find uh, probably gold, yeah, gold or brass to make real casts, we have to use one-time use casts. So clay casts are made by pouring clay over, you know, basically the, the same way you would do it with gold, except as clay. Um, and these can only be used a single time. So one for that and one for this. Uh, almost done. The end result of all that casting is a replacement pickaxe set for our pick. Let's start by repairing it, and then we can put the new pickaxe head on. Let's see, it gives it a lot more durability. It um, turns its mining level to bronze. It's slightly faster, slightly harder, and it replaces the crude trait with, uh, I guess, this gets rid of the crude trait. Well, cool. but um, the biggest thing is that it has a higher mining level, which is what we're after. Uh, now, if we have to repair it, we can repair it with the sharpening kit, because there aren't vitrified sand ingots at least not as far as i can tell um yeah to repair it we have to use the sharpening kit which is a little uh suboptimal i guess but we'll make do um anyways why don't we wrap up this episode here come back next time finish out the rest of 
age zero or tier zero and move on to tier one. So I hope you enjoyed this episode and I hope you'll enjoy the series to see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.